The Man Whore Podcast is sponsored by HotMovies.com. Try out some ethical paid-for porn for free with none of those hidden fees or secret recurring subscriptions when you sign up at HotMovies.com slash bonus and use the promo code MANHOR. To all my dick-having dudes out there, boners can be a fickle thing, am I right? Yeah, look, I know I talk a lot about how sex doesn't have to require a hard cock, but sometimes you want your cock hard. For us young fellas, all it takes is a couple of flaccid flukes to mess with your confidence, because in your 20s, let's admit it, it's all mental. Well, now you can keep a backup boner in your back pocket with Blue Chew. BlueChew.com brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. I'm just saying, on threesome night, sometimes you want the peace of mind of a sure thing. And right now, Blue Chew has a special deal for our listeners. Get your first shipment free. What? A whole shipment for free? That doesn't make sense. I know, it's insane. Take advantage. <laughs> yes, your first shipment is free when you use special promo code MANHOR at BlueChew.com. All you do is pay $5 for shipping. Blue Chew, B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W dot com. Use promo code MANHOR. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the Man Whore Podcast. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. To all my fellow Instagram jailmates, I salute you. This is Billy Presida, and you're listening to the Man Whore Podcast. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to my show, where I typically talk to women I've hooked up with about sex, dating, and why we didn't work out. However, uh, th th this week's special guest is not one of my former flames. Nope, uh, I, I stand zero chance because she is zero interested in the penis. Lauren Flans is on the podcast this week fellow sex and dating podcaster she does a uh, podcast all about coming out and i cannot wait to share with y'all in a bit but first no show dates people no show dates this week to promote uh just head on over to manwhorepod.com sign up for that mailing list because i'm going to be sending out a very very important announcement about a potential man whore on demand tour coming in 2019 you're not going to want to miss that one. You're going to want to know how to get me to a city near you. Uh, however, I do have a uh, holiday wish list. It is that time of the year. Yeah, it is holiday season. Whatever gift giving tradition you and your family are a part of. Eh, you know, mine is just perpetual poorness. I know. I guess that's my religion. But I did. I, I did make a I do this every year. I make a cute little graphic. And it's got, it's like my holiday wish list. So if you want to buy me like a present or some, or just do something nice for me that costs zero dollars, there's uh, categories of things you can do. Everything from free stuff, like leave me a rating and review or share the show with a friend all the way up to like cheap items, generous items, and like life changing, buy me a car or plane tickets kind of item so go to any of my social media my twitter my facebook uh you will see that okay all right um i want to get to your emails i want to start off with an email i'm going to read a email uh it's because the big one and it's on an important topic that i'm sure many people can relate to statistically most of us can relate to this one right this email comes uh from from erin erin writes hi billy I've just recently started listening to your podcast, and I just recently heard episode 113 entitled, You Probably Have Herpes Too. I got into your podcast after hearing your episode on Guys We Fucked, and I had recently sent them an email about a particularly horrible interaction on a dating site. Hearing this episode has given me a little more hope for my dating future, and I relate so much with your guest. I found out I had herpes in college, and it has been a cloud following me ever since. I feel like I never really got enough information about what having herpes entails because I've only recently realized that it's not a huge deal, and that the problem is with people's perception. 
I've honestly rarely had negative reactions, but I always worry about what the guy is going to say when I tell them. And this most recent reaction was a nightmare come true. I am a 34-year-old female who has recently jumped into the cesspool of online dating. I'm writing this after getting a text that said, Well, damn. That just ruined it. I don't want herpes. I always hate having to get into this subject since it's a very vulnerable position to be in with someone you're just getting to know. He has been asking me to come over and hang out since our first conversation, and I figured I'd just be honest since I could tell what he was getting at. One of his other texts was, Fuck my life. I knew something was up. Not really seeking advice here, since his reaction alone not only pissed me off, but made me just feel like I was used goods. I'm honestly writing this just to say thank you for the podcast, because had I not been listening to it, I probably would have felt like shit over this for way longer than I needed to. Wishing there were more Billy Procedas in the world. To be honest, thanks for all you do. Ugh. Wow. Uh, what, what an unempathetic douchebag. He seems like the kind of guy who would witness a person get hit by a car and his first reaction would be, Oh, now there's blood on my shoes. Day ruined. I'm socially retarded, and even I know to keep my inner monologue to myself if it's going to be unnecessarily hurtful towards the other person. It seems like you dodged a bullet there, because if it wasn't that comment, it would have surely been another ignorant statement. You want me to choke you? That's fucked up. You're very right, Aaron. Herpes is not a big deal. Not nearly, at least, as big of a deal as people's reactions to it. I honestly, and this might be an unpopular opinion, I honestly don't even believe that disclosure is necessary when not having an outbreak or experiencing dro prodrome. Prodrome, of course, is that uh, the tingling sensation before an outbreak comes out that you know a person can kind of sense. I can, I can sense, I can feel through the uh, podcast airwaves people's uh, you know clenching up, tightening up. Stay with me here, okay? Just think about, just try to step back and think about this logically. We don't ask people before making out with them if they've ever had a cold sore, right? Why is it different? Because the genitalia are involved. Okay, it's the same virus. Many argue that shedding makes it still possible to pass it on to someone else, even like when not having an outbreak. But we also don't ask people if they've recently had the flu or if they've had mono or if that red skin is poison ivy. Other things that could certainly be passed along, right? Just herpes. You know, we're, we're so quick to blurt out, <laughs> Have you been tested? Or even worse, like, uh, are you clean? I mean, this happened to me recently. A an older woman passed the point of having children, tied me up and sucked my dick uh, a, a bit while I was blindfolded. F fun, right? Great. When the blindfold comes off, you know, and she's ready to fuck, she just goes, are you clean? I'm, you know, not wishing to pull out a soapbox, a soapbox about her terminology in the moment, because are you clean implies that someone with an STI is dirty and that's not cool and blah, blah, blah. Um, I was willing to ignore her syntax. Mostly because I, I think I was having a blood flow circulation issue with my brain. So mm, are you clean? Because I definitely can't get pregnant anymore. And that's when I realized she's asking me that as her way of saying, let's not use condoms. And I'm like, in my head at least, er. Actually, even out loud, I was like, er, <laughs> I use condoms. That's that's not something up for debate with a brand new partner I met just the day before. And uh, and even if it was up for discussion, it's up for discussion. Not a nervous blurt of a question we've learned to ask in lieu of safer sex practices. Uh, as I discussed in my Jessica Drake episode, have you been tested is an incomplete statement or incomplete question and not something we're going to unpack as I'm rolling the condom onto my cock, you know? When you say, I'm clean, what does that mean to you? Because that might mean HIV negative. That might mean you had a standard STI panel. That might mean you do the more intense testing that porn stars go through. It's like, what are you trying to ask me? So now back to herpes. Uh, herpes is not typically 
included in a standard STI panel. When you go to the doctor and say you want to get tested for everything, that's an incomplete request. Usually it's going to be, they're going to test you for HIV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and hepatitis. Maybe just hep A, maybe a combination of the letters. I sometimes get confused between A, B, and C, but let's just round it up to hepatitis at the moment. Some gynecologists, some OBGYNs I know, uh, or I've heard about will throw in the herpes test automatically, but is not something you should go in assuming if it's something you really need. But by the way, you can request a herpes test, a blood test, by the way. Uh, but as Dr. Sarah, who's a past guest of the podcast, uh, has explained to me, the HSV test, the blood test, is pretty unreliable because it's known for giving both false positives and false negatives and then true positives and true negatives, right? So you, you kind of don't, even if you get a result, you don't even know if that is the result. The best test for HSV is a culture of a herpes sore. So that's after you already suspect you have herpes. It also doesn't tell you if that bump on your lip is a cold sore or not, the, the blood test, right? Um, although a doctor can look at that and really tell you pretty easily. Essentially, it's a waste of a doctor's time and your money worrying about whether or not you have herpes when you're not even showing symptoms. But that doesn't stop people from asking their doctors to be tested for this extremely common skin condition. Now, on the flip side... Most people don't realize they should get a throat culture done to see if they have oral gonorrhea or oral chlamydia. That doesn't come standard in a panel, and unless you request it, your doctor's usually not going to recommend it. In fact, I've had to fight doctors on testing my throat for doing those throat cultures. Um, Maybe less of a fight, but just more of like, they don't think about it. Like, I I, I talked about this before. There was a, um, like, a resident with me when um, the last time I got tested. And she was sitting there, and when I asked the the doctor doctor for the throat culture, I ex- she kind of pushed back a little, and then I explained why, and then the resident like looked all inquisitive, and then a light bulb went off in her head. She's like, "You're right, we should be testing that too, you know, because we like to suck dicks and eat pussy way more than we did 30, 40 years ago." Now that so so that bacteria uh, for chlamydia or gonorrhea it, it could be sitting in your throat unbeknownst to anyone because you know you weren't taught sex ed and you also like putting people's genitals in your mouth. We don't ask people before hooking up if they've gotten a throat culture done when they get tested. We just ask, "OMG, are you clean? Are you are you clean? Are you clean?" So when we ask each other, have you been tested recently? Follow it up with, and what were you tested for? I personally don't even bother asking because if anything, if House MD taught me anything, uh, everyone lies. So I protect myself with condoms and I avoid sex with people who don't appear to practice safer sex or who seem dangerously ignorant about sexual health. I can't have casual sex and protect myself against herpes. Can't be done. Okay. Even with condoms. I'm not going to give myself a headache worrying about it. So if that dude that you texted, if that dude's logic is, well, I want to know if my potential sexual partner has herpes. I like to respond with why and why herpes and what other questions do you typically ask your potential sexual partners? If you're super extra cautious and and you ask all the questions and inquire about various viruses and bacteria Fine. You get points for consistency. Then I think super valid. You are uh, an informed, knowledgeable worry wart, but a consistent worry wart, and I appreciate that. But if you're just worried about this one virus, this one non-life-threatening virus, grow up, all right? Educate yourself, because herpes, as well as skin-to-skin diseases like HPV, cannot be 100% prevented. Also, fun facts, roughly 80% of Americans have herpes. And if you can't handle potentially contracting this non-life-threatening STI, then you are not a good fit for having casual sex. You should not bring home people from a bar. You're not emotionally responsible enough to handle that. And sure, we don't want to contract the virus or get sick or break our leg or whatever, right? We all know we could potentially like break our leg snowboarding. 
that doesn't stop a lot of us from snowboarding. Personally, I don't like going snowboarding because I don't like putting on a lot of tight, constricting, warm people clothes. But that's besides the point. Similarly, it's like not having sex with people who tell you they have herpes is not going to save you because you're almost definitely having sex with people who have HSV and just don't know it or haven't told you. It's already, it's most likely already happened. And that's why I don't think you're obligated to tell people you have herpes. You can, and certainly a great decision, but I don't think you're obligated to. I don't think you're a bad person if you don't. I think this because the reason people think you should is dumb, inconsistent, and illogical. And I don't respect things that are dumb, inconsistent, and illogical. It's based on stigma and stigma alone, not based on facts. It's based off an arbitrary decision to limit it to genital herpes. And it's usually asked absent any other sexual health concerns. Again, this isn't a person who's just like super, super nervous about any sort of sickness. This is just people nervous about the stigma of this one STI. Okay, think about the last time someone asked if you've been tested for oral gonorrhea, right? Has never happened. Now, it is perfectly fine for this guy to not want to take the calculated risk reward of having sex with a person who has herpes. It is not fine to base that decision on ignorance. And it is definitely not fine to tell you that you ruined it for having a condition that this guy, honestly, probably has himself. L- little bonus challenge for the listeners. Go look up the transmission rate for herpes when asymptomatic. And then tell me if you're still super, super nervous. Hope that helps. All right. Thanks for writing in. And uh, you too can uh, you know send me in your comments, your questions, your booby pictures. You can send in your reactions to this answer over to manwhorepod at gmail.com. All right. I know that was a heavy one. I know it was. Tis the season to be giving. All right, isn't it? It's December. That was a segue, I guess. Um, <laughs> tis the season to be giving. And uh, and that's why I'm offering a very special offer to thank my patrons. You're all very, very important to this show, no matter how long you've been with me, okay? Whether you've been a member for a couple of days or a couple of years, I love you for it. So all patrons who are pledging $2 or more as of December 19th will receive a limited edition hand-drawn sticker done by none other than Rosa S. Candone. Hashtag Rosa is hot. Hey, I know you all remember Rosa. You love Rosa. Well, you can get a sticker done personally by Rosa. All you got to do is be a member at $2 or more as of December 19th. I'm not selling these, by the way, okay? I'm not selling them. You won't be able to get them next month. Qualifying members as of December 19th will get these stickers the week of Christmas. Not to mention, you'll get to enjoy all the other benefits of joining my Patreon community. Bonus episodes, sex-positive discussion groups, extra access to Billy, and more. Head on over to patreon.com slash podcast and become a member today. Again, that's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash podcast. I'm going to pair that special offer announcement with a very quick fan whore appreciation moment. Shout out to Charlie S. Big oops, buddy. I don't know how you slipped through the cracks there. Uh, So I must have forgotten your shout out at some point. But right now I want to say thank you so much, uh, not only for fucking a good chunk of the Patreon community, but for for being such an awesome fan whore. You rock, dude. So I'm giving you a solo fam moment uh, this week. Before I get to my guest uh, this week, Lauren Flans, I want to talk to you real briefly about HotMovies.com. I've been talking about hot movies for months, right? Fantastic, affordable way to hashtag pay for some of your porn. And this is, 
You know, the guys uh, over at Hot Movies, they didn't tell me this month that they wanted me to like promote a particular movie or star or anything. They were like, we have this advent calendar. Those of you not raised in the Christian faith, uh, advent uh, maybe adv- they have advent calendars at other where, elsewhere. I don't know. Advent calendar, it's basically like a calendar. And then like each day you open the little box and there's a little treat in there or a little like thing. Back in my house, we had, it was just all ornaments, like little book ornaments that told sections of a Christmas tale. It's cute. Uh, so, so at hotmovies.com, they have an advent calendar where they're giving away shit. And I only found this out today, December 4th, uh, that I'm recording this. And I was like, oh, wait, I missed three days of collecting prizes. What the fuck? Like the December 1st, it was 10 free minutes. December 2nd was like, you got a free seven day rental on this like hot lesbian movie. Yesterday was 200 reward points. I was like, ah, so I'm going to be checking it at hotmovies.com, the advent calendar every day this month uh, to collect a whole bunch of free stuff. So today, December 4th, what I got was big naturals, 29 clip three lifetime clip rental. Meaning I get this really hot clip uh, from Big Naturals 29, whatever that movie is, and uh, I get it for the lifetime of my account. I get to watch and watch that that movie. tomorrow. Uh, today, December 5th, prize? I don't know yet. I got to wake up tomorrow to open it. And you should do so too. And all you got to do is have a free account. It's free to have an account. In fact, if you sign up for the free trial, you're going to get 40 minutes of paid for ethical porn content when you use promo code manhor at sign up. Now they are going to ask for your credit card information and don't worry. This is the thing I love about hot movies. No hidden fees, no secret subscriptions. You have to go cancel later on. No calling your bank and be like, I didn't know I signed up for this. None of that. You only get charged when you choose to buy minutes. And you don't have to buy minutes. Honestly, if you start right now with promo code manhor, you start with a 40 minute free trial, then you're going to rack up a bunch of free minutes and free videos on the advent calendar. It's cool as shit. Um, so I don't know. I, I just talked a bunch about an advent calendar, but honestly, like I think that's really, really, really fun because I am a grown child. Once again, go to hotmovies.com. Uh, or hotmovies.com slash bonus. Use promo code manhor for 20 free minutes on the house on me for any package you sign up for, whether that's the free trial or a bundle of minutes. Hotmovies.com, a fantastic way to pay for your porn. And now for this week's guest, Lauren Flans. Oh, so I, uh, I met up with Lauren when I was out in Los Angeles. Uh, we've, we've connected on the Twitters, right? She hosts a show called Coming Out with Lauren and Nicole, where, as you can tell by the title, they have on queer guests, typically, uh, to discuss their coming out moment. Really, really fun times. Uh, we, we talked about her coming out a bit and uh, how her parents are cool with the gay thing as they call it, apparently. Uh, We also talked about her work volunteering uh, in an LGBT center and how she kind of ended up dating a straight girl. Ooh, juicy. So I'm really excited uh, to share her with you this week. Let's get to my conversation with Lauren Flans. I don't think so. I listened to, um, at the time that I listened to, it was your most recent episode. Um, and of course, I'm forgetting her name. Uh, she's trans. Oh, and Serena Danyari. Yeah, yes, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so I feel like I have a pretty good overview. It's like you didn't totally you. fuck up in that conversation, so you can't be that no, bad. No, 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 it's no, like- no, no, no. It's no, like no, no, no. I love that one. I loved it. I was just like, I was like, I should like listen to the. I always try to listen to stuff before I before I'm like, fuck, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I really, I really loved it. Oh, but so I feel like you. that was like a pretty good overview of you. I got insight into the queer stuff you've done. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> yeah. I suppose. It's like I don't always view it. It is interesting because I don't always view it as queer. Like I know that whoever it's with, like they're viewing it as their queer experience, like mm, fine, cool, you're cool. valid and things. But me, I'm just like, yeah, there's a there's a vagina present. I'm interested. Yeah, like what's yeah. going on here? Um, you know, even the one trans dude that – even though, I mean, we, that I did something with, it was like, 
he was like in the first like six weeks of transition. I was like, you look more like in my mind. Of course, I'm not saying oh, this, but I was like, you look like just a really awkward Asian girl than a. Oh, you know, I feel like you talked a, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember you talking about that. So, but it was interesting for her to be like, well, what queer stuff have you done? I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that I wasn't paid for. Like, I guess I have to yeah, clarify yeah, sure. sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. But I, the thank you. I'm talking right now with Lauren Flans. Hi, Ryan's with hands. It I'm does, told. It does. Thank gosh. I mean, I don't know how we've gotten F L A N S right. We get uh, flans a lot. I get flans a lot. Oh, sorry if people can hear my dog walking around in the background. I, no, it's like a nice. It's a. It's, it's a texture. Okay, good. That's texture good to point. the episode. <laughs> like, oh, it's like we're at home with them too. Yeah, yeah. We're, just, we're just hanging out in my place. But you also uh, co-host a great podcast called the Coming Out. Po- Is it Coming Out or it's Coming Out? It's Coming podcast? Out with Lauren and Nicole. Mm. We wanted. We threw our names in there because. Why the fuck not? Why not? Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. was listening to it today. I listened to uh, was it Nicole's mom, right? Or your oh mom? Yeah. yeah, no, it was Nicole's mom. No, my my uh, parents don't actually know about the podcast. Well, they don't even know it exists. I haven't told them about it yet. But I guess there's got to be a safety in just simply like, oh, what's a, their response is what's a podcast? Yeah, that's true. I I don't know if they'd um, be able to find it anyway. But yeah, <laughs> they uh. <laughs> I'm I'm fairly private, I guess, in terms of like what we talk about. So it's it just hasn't really. <laughs> I mean, well, obviously, I have to ask like, what do you purposely try not to talk about? That I that's such a that's a that's a great question. I like they are they are cool with the gay thing. They're certainly a lot better than than many parents. They're cool are. with I'm the gay lucky. thing. Like the they're cool thing. with the Facebook. <laughs> They're actually all over the Facebook. Mm. Um, but another thing, I, I have not accepted their friend requests on Facebook because I'm like, I think we should keep these things separate. Uh, a little, a little, just a little bit of distance. Um, we have a good relationship, yeah. but we're not like, it's not like I'm best friends with my parents. I'm also an only child, which I think Ooh. frames it a little differently, maybe, where it's just kind of like all on me, like they don't have anyone else to sort of spread that attention around to. Um, do I need to do anything? No, no you're doing good. great. Okay, great. Ignore I'm anything I great. do with a pen or a this, like ignore me. Terrific. Yeah, you're doing, you're fantastic. I will ignore you completely. You're great. You um, got your pussy grabs back shirt on. I do, because I'm going to go vote, yeah. <laughs> very gay beanie. I'm like, we're inside, there's no need. I know, it's not we're cold here, but. Warm. That's honestly <laughs> less about uh, being a lesbian and more about, I haven't washed my hair in a couple days, so I just threw a beanie on before you came <laughs> over. Sure thing. Yeah, that's how I roll. Um, but anyway, Oh yeah, so so they are. Uh, I came out to them um, end of my senior year of college, and they're they're good with it. That's my dog. Your dog is so fun. He is a cute man. <laughs> um, but we don't really we don't really talk about it. Mm. We just it just sort of unless I'm I'm dating someone and I'm not, so it it doesn't really need to come up okay now what he's growling want? that's a little want? disruptive come here buddy i'm not a threat so i know i brought luggage he's but not, i'm leaving a man I promise in the house. he's like this is new <laughs> um yeah well your podcast is uh is going over uh people's coming out stories yeah yeah we we have uh, a wide array of people on and they yeah they talk about their coming out stories which is kind of like whatever it means to them which is cool uh because some people will talk about like when they first realized it and then some will piero wants to share his coming out story i'm pretty sure my dog is gay by the way i'm trying to push him in that direction (laughs) buddy chill out hey come on should i put him on my lap i could put him on we could do that here, we'll do that. I'll so get him. Can a, I put the yeah, mic down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have an indica for him? I don't know. What, um, Come on, bud. Hey. He's a little spazzy man. He's very excited because Nicole actually came over a little earlier because we had to record a pickup really quick. Mm-hmm. So, a pickup, throwing industry of, terms around here. Uh, <laughs> he's kind of out there. Now he's on my lap. All right. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Mm. Um, what were I'm just trying to eat the microphone? What were we talking about? Uh, My was, parents. Oh yeah, your parents. You, they won't really seem to talk about it too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just I'm I'm a sort of like a private life private kind of person at least when with my parents um i don't know uh so if i'm dating someone i let them know but when i'm not it just seems like we don't really need to talk about that kind of thing Uh, does that annoy you um no that's i think that's both of our our 
preferences. Preference, yeah. but yeah, but if you were like dating men, like I, mean, I gotta imagine they would That's care such less. A good, you know so what? I think when I Nicole sounded upset guys, about something similar with her mom. Yes. She was on, so. Well, Nicole is. Um, they have a very. They sort of have a relationship that, at least to me, looked like a, a like they are. You know, like it's it's mother daughter, but they're also friends very much. Okay. Uh, is is how I perceived it, which is lovely. Um, I just don't happen to have that with my parents which is totally fine it's just yeah. it's just that's the nature of it so we kind of, we don't really talk about like sex stuff ever <laughs> well I, I, but that's the thing it's like no one's ever asking about like what you're doing in bed like if yeah, i'm no i would shatter and like turn to ash if my parents ever asked me anything about sex so that's good that that's never we had one super this is a good story when i first um, so I had a girlfriend, a serious girlfriend, senior year of college, which is when I came out to them. Mm. Um, and then, uh, my girlfriend and I moved to LA together. And I think the most my folks and I've ever talked about sex, never talked about my dad ever. Also never had like the talk with uh -huh. my mom. Like we're just that, we're just not that kind of a family. Um, but I remember we were, my girlfriend and I were over at my folks place cause they lived in LA at the time. Um, and my girlfriend was like downstairs, like talking with my dad and my mom and I were upstairs on their little roof and I was like watering her plants and, and she's like, uh, she's like, Heather, Heather's lovely. And I'm like, Oh, thank you. And she's like, um, you know, uh, lesbians can, can have safe sex too. And I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm glad you took a class. And then there's like a pause and she goes, um, have you, have you, are you aware of latex gloves and dental dams? And I was like, I literally just, I, I kind of blacked out, but my memory is just like, <laughs> I remember like turning to her and being like, we are going to pretend that that didn't happen and we're never going to have this conversation yeah. again. And she was like, okay. So that was the extent of, of, I mean, good for her. Yeah. Like she was, tr that was like she her did trying. Some research. Yeah, yeah. No, I give her tons of credit for that, but I was just like, I can't talk about this. People without gay kids, uh, don't know about latex. No, clubs. she had clearly gone online and done some research. Yeah. So I really do. I really respect that. But yeah, we just sort of don't really get into <laughs> I didn't learn about latex gloves till like my first sex part I was like why is everyone wearing those yeah. it was like yeah that's a good old mom yeah she really she did the work she put in the work yeah but you said uh, with, the, with the podcast is like coming out it could be like whatever so yeah. do you have people who come out who talk about coming out stories as say like maybe coming out kinky or coming out poly or anything that wasn't we necessarily like strict sexual orientation we did have it's always so far at least it's always been um in addition to a sexual orientation uh, -huh. uh but we definitely want to have uh, we are conscious of like having on uh more people in in terms of the broader definitions of coming out uh we did a great interview i think it's episode five with uh with daisy egan um who's a new york actress and uh she talked about uh, about how she was in her first poly relationship. And so what that was like, um, I think her, it's in the episode description, but I think the sentence was, she said that she'd gone from like sort of bi to full on queer poly in under a year. So we talked about like how that sort of like kind of all happened at once for her. Yeah. Um, but that was really cool. Yeah. We've had some definite discussions about, uh, about poly stuff. And I think that was the episode where we touched on it the most. Ah. Yeah. Well, that, it's interesting you say she went from like kind of bi to full on queer. And it's like, what I, I get, a, first. I no, get, right a, I get a lot of these like, uh, like trying straights. Does that make no, sense? No, what does that mean? They're like the, the straights who are trying to understand. Oh, oh and okay. I will get questions of like, what's the difference between X and this? Or what does this mean? Sure, and I'm like, sure. I mean, like, I can try to answer, but. I'm not the one to answer. Oh, God, like, I barely am, too. Um, I'm always like, ask, like, someone in college. Like, they're the <laughs> one. They know so much yeah. more than I do, like, what's going on. And they have five tumblers they can refer you yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, um, but, like, what was the difference, I guess, what, how did she describe the difference between, like, being bi and then identifying as queer? She had, um, she, well, she'd gotten married pretty young to a guy. So that, and for many people, that, 
doesn't affect, you know, being bi at all. But for her particular situation, it's like she she had dated women. And then um, I think it was like right out of college or something. Uh, she married this guy and he was uh, she obviously explains it better than I do. But yeah. my memory of it is like he was kind of conservative. Family was kind of conservative. So she sort of shelved aspects of like her personality because within the marriage, it was like it just wasn't something that that was happening yeah. uh that marriage did not last shockingly I imagine. yeah and so um and then after that it was like she had a situation uh where she with a guy who she wasn't married to but they had been dating for a while mm. uh she had a son with him uh and then at some point she just sort of started segueing into into being queer like or more queer but like uh, what that mean to, i mean like what was the did she stop sleeping with like cis men or what like for I, her yeah and i'm trying i'm trying to remember because i don't yeah. want to obviously like mistell her story oh, sure. um but for her it was like the relationship uh with the the father of her son uh gradually became like like the intimacy just sort of like faded out of it like they're still and to this day they're still huh. very close and uh, but that just sexually, like that wasn't where their particular relationship was, but obviously they share, they share a child. So they're still super close, but yeah, sexually it was like, she started, uh, yeah, she started having way more sexual experiences mm. with women or with female bodied, uh, people than she had before. And then at some point it was just sort of like, Oh, I think that's all it is now. Ah, like, I okay. think the part of my life where I'm with cis men seems to be over. So, so similar to you, like it was the the using queer to really just mean lesbian in a way. I think for yeah, again, I don't I don't want to speak for her, but um, we we could also pivot if you want to speak more for yourself because we were talking about that off oh, mic. Sure. Just the idea of like a lot of people ask like, what does queer mean? And it's like, yes. oh, there's like not a definition. It's kind totally. of the point of the word, but also words need to mean some kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I think queer, uh, we kind of think of it as like, we, the community. Uh, it's like it's like an umbrella term. So it yeah. encompasses uh, gay, lesbian, bi, trans, non-binary, right. genderqueer, asexual, intersex, like a whole bunch of whole bunch of letters. But then some people um, use it to say just not cis men or just not the yeah. Whatever, that's the thing sexual. about queer is people <laughs> can have their own definition of it. So and yeah. that's why we were talking about this off mic. I I use queer because it's inclusive. So when I'm like facilitating at the center or on the podcast, I use the word queer but if i'm just like having a one-on-one -on -one with someone i'm like i'm gay so right. you know like very clearly like i've spelled it out and that's that's like what abandon I'm all with. ye hope okay <laughs> yeah i just all the it's... dudes who are throwing themselves at me uh <laughs> no i just yeah for me it's like i'm kind of a label person i mm. sort of like uh definitions and stuff just i'm yeah. kind of a black and white person like by nature so it makes me comfortable to be able to be like i'm gay there you go now you know what i am i've told you like yeah. we're all square uh but queer is great because it is just like it's super inclusive it can mean and it does mean different things to different people so you sometimes maybe do want to get a follow-up definition <laughs> wait so now so when you're using you're using more for the the benefit of others who are you're talking to or like i guess the, yeah, the groups when i you're... think so or if i talk about like the community i'll say like the queer community that one i get more yeah. but I've, I've it 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 just it seems odd to me to use a different thing for other people to describe yourself when you're like if i had my ways i'd just say this yeah and that yeah and i i feel like i probably do really say gay if yeah. i'm if i'm describing myself it's sort it, it all kind of depends on the context of like what I'm talking about, yeah. I guess, if that makes sense. If I'm talking about probably like dating or something like that, I think I, I think I will defer to saying gay just so it's like, just so it is more clear. But if it's like, I was at like a queer event, you know, right. like I'll say that, like, was it a lesbian event? Mm, probably. That's probably why I was there. But I'll usually say like in that context, I think I'll use queer. Mm -hmm. but that's a good question i don't know yeah I should pay attention <laughs> I, I try to but i can't keep i keep taking notes and then they changed another thing i'm like I know, okay they change words a lot yeah and then yeah. i can't keep up and i'm like and you're in, in the community yeah it's hard <laughs> 
Do you ever get? Do you have to get into like little spats within? Like, uh, oh, I fuck up all the time. Yeah. Well, not, no, not. I didn't. Say, well, not necessarily the fuck up. I just mean, like, mean like in like a spats. Like, yeah, because like, hey, we all let words slip, or we all have slightly different opinions of the same good opinion. Yeah. But oh, it's the totally. it's the inner it's a intra war or whatever. That, uh, yeah, that, sorry, Pierre, I was crying. He oh, gets Pierre? very upset about linguistics and semantics. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever. Pierre's had... trying to correct us, but we can't know, understand he, him. He's so woke. It's hard to. <laughs> it's hard when your when your son is more woke than you are. Um, I don't think I've ever had. No, I don't think I've ever had like like a a spat, as it were, or a fight, because mostly people are. People are cool about knowing if your intentions are good, and so they can, like, gently correct. Um, I'm going to put him on this chair. This is the most annoying interview you've ever had to oh, do. Oh, right. Um, there, he's sitting down. We're good. Um, yeah, I, so I don't think I've ever had – I don't think I've ever had, like, like a, hey – you fucked up, but I'm mean, like, I don't think I've ever had anything like that. Like no that. call outs, yeah. No, I don't think so. People are pretty, pretty generous about, about knowing, like, you're a good person who, like, maybe said the wrong thing. And mm. I'm also, like, so super, I'm also so super conscious of it that I think, I think I'm pretty careful about like if if there's if i ever have a question of pronouns mm. it's like nope i'm using this person's name because i'd rather do that than like yeah yeah so i guess i've been i guess i've been lucky i've definitely had to in the groups that i facilitate at the center had to like say to someone hey what you just said is biphobic and you may not realize it but like mm. here's why so i've had to do it on that end uh but i think i've been pretty lucky about not having it happen the other way yeah yet but hey, there's still time. <laughs> what type of what type of things do you like find yourself correcting like when you're helping now at the LGBT center like that? When I think probably biphobia is maybe the biggest one because um, and we've talked about this on the podcast mm. a lot because uh, because Nicole is bi mm. and that's part of the reason why uh, I love that we're co-hosts is that it's not just it's not just two gay chicks. Yeah, um, that's how like by the way before until I finally I think today was the first I really was able to figure out which I was like before I was like okay well I know one's gay I know one's bi and so far that is different. I was like uh, now I just got matched yeah. faces with names. Oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> or and then avatars with names. Um, yeah. It's, it's, do we at least sound different? I feel uh, like, hopefully. Well, I listen to some podcasts where I can't fucking tell. I'll put it this way. One, right. That's how it started. Oh, okay. But, but, but once I got a name attached to one long enough, then I was like, okay, now I can hear the difference. Yeah. But in the beginning, <laughs> it, it's like you're still trying to f get the... For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so biphobia, I think, is probably the one that comes up the most because... Um, for and I can only speak for women because I only facilitate the yeah. female groups. But for a lot of women, it's like, um, and I, I, I'll speak personally. For me, I thought I was I was bi for a long time, mm. and I initially I came out to my parents as bi, and like that was how I identified for a long time. And it took me a while to be like, oh, nope, I'm not bi, I'm gay. But that you, was you like share a share more process. of a, that more specific oh, moment because oh my, I'm is that happy priceless? Happy to do that. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, so so I think uh, uh, many women do have a similar experience with that. So for them, if someone has gone through the thing of being like, I'm bi, and then realizing they're gay, it's hard for them to realize that that's not everybody's experience. So sometimes women in the groups will be like, yeah, I'm seeing this woman and like, you know, she says she's bi, but it's like, come on, just like realize that you're gay. And I'm like, no, 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 that's what that's what happened for us. Uh -huh. But that's not everybody. Some people are just bi. So I think it's hard for those of us who went through that as mm -hmm. a transitional phase to realize that like that's not it's it's not just a stopover for a lot of people. Um, so, but again, that's just like a yeah. gentle correction. That's not, not that's like something a that tweets and you know. It's not like an angry tweet to them. No, yeah, no. It's, it's just like, literally someone being like, oh, I'm dating this bi girl. I'm like, I don't know. Like, come on, just pick a side. And I'm like, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like some yeah. people legitimately like both. Um, so yeah, it's just sort of stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's uh just the, the, the whole call outs over the things I find 
if we could come at it with the more compassionate, like, hey, by the way, as opposed to like, um, excuse yes. me. Yes. Because yeah, even yeah, right yeah. now, someone would have piped up when you said like, some people like both. Someone could I like, know. I excuse me. It's it. all. Fuck me. It I know. That's so funny because I heard myself <laughs> saying, I was like, that's a fuck up. And you you are woke. No, 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 no. If anyone yeah. asks, I'm a problematic asshole. No, I have a reputation I 100%. No, you were right. I see. I fucked up a lot. But it's, it's like we, but we could waste time yelling at each other, or we can like you know no, t- totally. take time to come together and like have some patience with one another to fight a way bigger. Like they're just such bigger issues in my. And granted, like I don't have to deal with much of the things in my. But on an, as an outsider, I feel like we have bigger things to deal with than um. We need a, a half hour conversation yes. about a slip up in language that is already confusing as is. Yeah. It's like maybe we could deal with that after the scary shit's done. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's yeah. Me. Let's see how let's see how things go today. Yeah, we're, we're recording, recording this yeah. right we're now on election day, and like we are far from the polls closing, so uh, we have no idea how Exciting. tomorrow's gonna look. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I agree, and I feel like where most of those things happen does tend to be online, where people are like, you know, yeah. they're behind a computer screen. So that's and luckily I haven't had to deal with that that much. Uh, mm-hmm. And in person, everyone's been. Very understanding. So. How long have you been uh, volunteering at the LGBT Center? I started like right after the 2016 election. Yeah. I'm one of those. Mm-hmm. I'm one of those people. Yeah, I think in December was when I went to the orientation. It's the, it's the activist version of like, I just got cancer. I'm going to go skydiving. It is 100% that. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, we're all fucked. I should do something. Yeah. Yeah. But it's been great. I'm glad I... That's the good. I think let's all try to think of the 2016 election in terms of like how it affected me and becoming a better person. If everyone could just frame it that way, we'd be a lot better off. So there's one good thing that came out of it. You're (laughs) all welcome. And how how are you finding, uh, how are you liking the work? I love it. I really love it. Yeah. I really, it's really cool. You got some 21 year old kid you got, uh, you know, under your wing now or something. I just feel like that happens when you volunteer long enough, you just have... They give you a kid. Be like, they this give one's you a kid. Yeah, mine you look is, out for um, him mine is or them running or errands for me right now, yeah. uh, but should be back shortly. Um, no, it is great. It's the way it's set up is like they they discourage you from having like friendships outside because it's like we're we're in like the facilitator position, so so we don't like hang out after the groups or anything. But I definitely like some of these women. They were in the groups when I started, like they've been there longer than me. And now it's like, yeah, I have like, uh, however many, it's like a two year long relationship at this point where, you know, I see them like once a week or a couple times a month. And it's really cool. Yeah. And you're teaching classes. Is, like, is it's this not, a, it's, it's or? what I do is, and what Nicole does as well is we facilitate the discussion groups. So okay. we're, we're sort of there in a capacity, like we're, we're not therapists and we do go through training, but we're very much like, like we were just talking about, like, I will fuck up, um, for sure. So we're not like, um, instructing, but it's, uh, the, I do two groups. One is like a, just a women's like social group. Um, and so it's anyone who, uh, any female identifying, uh, people are, are welcome to come to it. And we just sort of, we talk about whatever. It's kind of like, it's sort of a space where people who maybe, aren't out you know like in their day-to-day life can like come and just talk about queer female stuff yeah. so yeah we talk about like a whole wide range of stuff um and then the other one that uh that i really love doing is the women's coming out workshop and that is a little more geared towards like we're a little more facilitating in that one in the other discussion group we're sort of like a participant who you know, keeps yeah. keeps it going. And Do you have to work hard not to plug the podcast during the coming out I workshop? I plug the fuck like- out of the podcast. <laughs> oh, I plug it like crazy because we started it like, or at least my yeah. impetus for doing it was from that, doing that workshop because I felt bad that like these women were only in the workshop one day a week and then we're like, fly, be free, good luck, see you in six days, like yeah. hope, it, hope it goes okay. And I wanted them to have like a resource like the rest of the time and I looked online for like, for like a coming out podcast and there wasn't one mm. and i was like oh fuck it no i have to do it i guess so there you so go so i do plug it because i legitimately started it to like hopefully give people a resource 
Yeah, yeah. No, we. I feel like that's a good when you're in when your your podcast has its niche and you're working around in that niche. Yeah. Good time. If I'm in an orgy, like I'm plugging my show, I get it. Oh, you gotta plug you know? in an orgy always in both sense like, of the word. Yeah. plug, I would imagine. <laughs> well, so um, so so you're dating around, or I mean, I. What, I- <clears throat> I, I I believe I marked down single with giggle. I giggled. Yeah. I did. I giggled because I've I've been single like for just so long. I'm just very single. Um, I haven't been actively dating in a while. I sort of I took a break from like all the apps because I just I don't love app dating. Yeah. Do you like it? Are you, um, do you app date? I like app hookup more than app. Okay, dating. and see, I'm not really a hookup person. Mm. I'm one of those people where it's like, I I have to have, I don't have to be like in sure. love with somebody, but there's gotta be like, Conne- there has to be some kind of a connection. I mean like, like I'm, beyond. Yeah, but hooking up can also be like, let's have a drink and if there's a connection, like let's go okay. back. You know, it's it doesn't have to be like, hey, uh, come over, I will be blindfolded naked in my like bed. I just like hookup shame, yeah. didn't I? That, it's okay. I hook it's up so fine. No, I just think what's different means different things to different that's people. That's true. That's true. Some people think it's fucking, and then I'm like, I think it's any like deep make out or more. Okay. Uh, and then you get to then, oh. Then yeah. I guess for me, okay. Then even for deep make out, I am a person who. By the way, deep make out, great phrase. <laughs> I will use it. Okay, please. Um, it's very, it, it's very graphic. <laughs> like I don't know, it, it paints a picture. Uh, but even for that, like, I think it paints the wrong picture. No, I love it. Deep, it's, I don't know. Deep makes me late. think of the I'm guy who's it. swallowing a face. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. that's definitely one interpretation. I also recently got told I'm a bad kisser no. on stage, so I was just like. Okay, so maybe I'm a little sensitive to that. ex? Actually, a current person. <gasps> she didn't say bad. She just said you're me? not the greatest kisser. I'm like, whoa, wait. That's like one of my few things I think I'm good oh, at. Oh, fuck. Uh, and it was in front of a paying audience, so. This is someone you're, are you still seeing? Are you still seeing? Yeah, her? there was a conversation in the car. Oh, there was a conversation in the car. I, I got the throwback one thing at them that was like, that would have otherwise been utterly inappropriate and unfair to say, but I was like, no, I'm gonna let this one drop uh, now, so it's all, it's Close off my head. Off. Yeah, but you guys are still seeing each other, so it oh, I still love her. That. She's great. Oh, okay, it's great. It's just you know, I let I let one slip out to like even the playing yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, I th- I I'm gonna say that's fair. <laughs> um, deep make out. Oh yeah, yeah. deep make out. So like, I think y- yeah. for me, even for even for minimal, even just for making out, I really do, or I have to be like very, very, very drunk <laughs> and like attracted to somebody. But if Otherwise, like I got, I need. I'm one of those people who needs like, but, I, yeah. I need like connection. Yeah, I don't know. No, I mean that makes. I mean, I, like yeah. I said, I also like to have. <clears throat> I've talked about this on the show, but I need to either be into the person or I need to be into the scene. Okay. So like, if I'm pitching a wild, crazy stranger play scene, I don't have to be into that person's personality really sure. much at all. Yeah. Because it has yeah, yeah. It, what we're about to do has nothing to do with each other. Yeah. It has to do with this really fun construct we've created. But otherwise, if it's like, hey, I want to fuck tonight. Cool. Let's meet at a bar. Like, it doesn't mean we're going to fuck. It's just like if yeah, there's a connection yeah. that we are. Because, I mean, at least for me, I don't like fucking people I don't have a connection yeah. or something with. Yeah. You know, I got to make them laugh at something so I know I yes, have value. That is, yeah. That really, yeah. You yeah. got to gotta get that laugh validation. <laughs> something like that. But yeah, but the, no, a- the apps help facilitate the hookups a little better. And the dating is like we, neither here nor there, but yeah. I'm barely even using it. Well, I did, you know, I did the thing where I was on a bunch a bunch of apps like a couple of years ago. Mm. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do this. Um, and I did, you know, I went on like a number of dates, but from an app, I never, never had a second date from an app. Mm. I would just never met anybody who I was like, yeah, I would, I would like to see this person again. Oh, that's a lie. There was one yeah. person who I would have seen again, and she ghosted me. And that was, oh, I know me. Can you believe I it? I can't. Fuck. You have a wonderfully um, loud dog. Like, how could she pass up? He's been great now. Been, he's been so good. I should have just put him on the chair to begin with. He's chilling. Um, oh, but that's yeah, so rough. That how was, was the date itself? It was. It wasn't. It wasn't like great, but it was good. And I. It was my very first one too. So, online date. Right. Yeah, it's my okay. very first online date and I got ghosted. So I give myself credit for not just like immediately bailing forever. Um, I think it was from I think it was from Hinge. Hinge. Which is sort of like 
That's like the app everyone makes fun of, right? Like, I mean, that's it, not one of the good ones. We make fun of all the apps. There we is do. No, okay. like in in the realm of comedy, I feel like there is no like They're all terrible. good app. Well, like I think there's a lot of great apps. I just think like when we're making fun of apps, like there is no good there's no app where they go like, "Oh yeah, these all suck, but this one's so good." Yeah, that's like, fair. I feel like Hinge is a little more of like the nerdy one. Or Hinge the, like, at least you get to go mm-hmm. yell at so you get to go yell at your mutual friend about yeah, it. Yeah, you have to like know, so, yeah. Like what the fuck was up with Darcy? Like <laughs> Darcy's the you vouched. best name to just pull out of the air. Uh, if I, if I, the day I don't run into a Darcy, just in my, they're everywhere. Um, no, that yeah. So it was, it was a decent day. It was like mm. we had banter. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I was like, all right, I would give this another shot. And it was like a daytime, like coffee date and i'm always like you can't really tell until it's like night and you're like having a drink like you can't tell if there's like possibly a spark there. yeah you're like i can't have sparks without alcohol is literally what you just told me Mm, i stand by it i stand by it i stand by it no i think i'm the kind of person where i'm like i'm always gonna be a little bit like ha ha ha, i'm anxious so i'm like doing a lot of bits and like so i need if i'm gonna like really sit in a situation mm. and be like could there be something here i think i do need darkness and like one drink mm-hmm. to like settle down enough so i'm not just like rapid fire joke person yeah so i was willing to like to like see if that yeah. works out uh she it turned out was not interested in that oh, so no. hey look we're, we're all just people just fumbling assume, around i see you have a lot of women like where you go to the first dates on these first dates where you don't want a second there's at least a good chunk who they want the second there have been a, a couple yeah there have been okay there was one where i got ghosted i think there were two one was a setup though and one was a dating app where where they were interested in a second one and i did the thing where i'm like Hey, uh, I really felt more of a friendship vibe. Um, love to hang out with you as a friend, but which of like they're not they're gonna be like, yeah, that sounds great. Like, yeah, let if, me be let me every time we hang out, we'll be reminded about I how you don't know like what me. What the fuck to say? So I'm always like, I'd love to still hang out, and and to their credit, they're always like, I'm really busy this week. Um, yeah, because they they're trying to get laid because that's what I the know, whole point of meeting you was. Know, I never know what to say. Uh, what I, do you What do you say? I mean, I'm not in that position terribly often where it's. I don't believe that. Uh, <laughs> where they're interested and I'm not. Um, I'm really into people who are really into me. So oh, okay. For people to be into me and me not into them says something. That sounds healthy. I tend I'm, to be more into people who are not not interested uh, in there are a lot of people who would tell me, who would say that what i just said was very unhealthy because i'm like probably like seeking out or accepting all the love that comes my way in my life oh interesting know. there's probably but, a happy medium but neither of us are it yeah okay, that's why cool. we're both single i guess i don't know yeah. but but the uh i don't know i wouldn't have had to like i had to, actually i was at a conference this past week and i had to let someone down um she was actually mad because like i was interested and then I changed my mind. Oh, yeah. Hey, it happens. I was taught by women that like consent yes, can be withdrawn no, at any time. Lie. It's so totally it's like, true. It's totally true. <laughs> yeah. It, it sucks and she's allowed to be pissed off about it, but you're totally allowed to yeah. do that. Like that's valid. I think that's valid. But, but saying like, hey, I got more of a friend vibe from you. Like I think that's fair to say. And then you know you have allowed it to – you've opened the door for them to say like, yeah, I don't really want – And not, yes. uh, And when women told me like, oh, I just got more of a friend vibe and like I really like to be friends with you. And there's a good ch- – like sometimes they really do mean it. They're like, dude, like I really yeah. want to hang out. And I'm and just I like – I kind of mean it too because I need more yeah. queer friends. <laughs> but no one's taking me off on <laughs> Yeah, well, like the thing is like I tell them like, look, not for nothing. Like you're great and I'm really interested. And like if you change your mind and want to come sit on my face, like let's make that happen. I think that's totally but fair. I don't want to like be – a if I'm into you, like, I don't want to be hanging out with you and being every day reminded yes. how you're not into me. Yes. That's not fun. No, it's not fun. Like, you won't be able to tell me, oh, I went on a great date. I'm not going to be able to enjoy that. No, and you also don't want to be sketchy about it where it's like, yeah, I'll be your friend. But in the back of your mind, you're always hoping that she'll be into it. So, like, I think in that case, you are doing the right thing by being like, let me know if you change your mind. I'll be over here not... <laughs> being friends yeah. like and also you might get this yeah. as a performer like time is limited already oh, yeah that's between another shows reason I auditions dating. Yeah. creating doing a show podcast whatever it's like all that stuff is like the limited time i have is for like going to see movies and 
you know, dates or like romance or sex and then like crying alone in my apartment. You got to budget out for crying alone. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. have time for like a, f- a pseudo friend. No, there's a lot. The Netflix keeps releasing yeah. series like there's shit to do. Have you ever had someone who like keeps hitting you up like in a friendly capacity and kind of doesn't let up? Like they're always checking in and you're like, we went on one date and it wasn't interested. Good question. Um, I don't think. I have. Because I've had a couple who like they they think I'm good to go to for advice, like sex and dating advice. Because I think it's partially because of what I do, but then it's like, I, no, I, no, I, I will, I will only give you the advice if you come over and I will show you. Otherwise, I'm not (laughs) interested. Like, no, I think, I think I've been, I've been okay in that arena. And I've never had like a crazy person who keeps texting or I've been pretty lucky. Wait, you haven't had crazy people texting you constantly living in the world as a woman? I just heard that that's part of the experience. It is. I I think I'm really fucking lucky or I'm just very, or I project some sort of like wall that's like, stay far away. (laughs) (laughs) I will grab back. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, I've been really lucky with, (laughs) with that kind of thing okay um yeah i i've been really fucking lucky because i've definitely seen it happen with friends so for sure and not me i got this vicious dog you do have this great dog people are terrified <laughs> when was the last uh what you would call like a really good committed relationship you were in oh if, boy. if one i don't know that's a good question the last relationship that was that was really good was like 10 years ago wow. it was in amsterdam it was when oh. i lived in amsterdam yeah what was that about um it was with a straight girl so Ooh. that was hard or someone who identified as straight because i've gotten in fights with friends Fun. who are like if she's sleeping with you she's not and i'm like if she says she's straight She's straight, and if right. I'm the only like I I go by like the person's definition, but and, I've definitely got in arguments about that. And we have to also maintain that if we're going to convince dudes that like, yeah, if you kiss a boy once, it doesn't make you gay or bi or anything, so it's okay. You oh, it. okay. See, so I'm doing a public service. Public I didn't service. even right. realize. Well, I'm just a, I'm a fan of consistency in messaging because I'm just like it's too I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm too dumb for nuance sometimes. <laughs> I just That's need hilarious. some consistency. It's easier. <laughs> And then I like to apply the rules fairly across the board. Yeah, no, yeah. God bless. So, so you met this straight girl? Yes. Um, this was at uh, I worked at a at a comedy like improv sketch theater, um, and she was uh, like the floor manager for like the wait staff there, um, and we were like really really good friends, mm. but always had like a flirty because I was like as soon as I saw her, I was like mm, that girl's really hot. I like that girl. Mine. <laughs> I was like. Mm. <laughs> they put a tiny flag in her head. Um, so like, what's all that? Don't worry about it. It's <laughs> it like, she didn't know it's fine. Don't look in the mirror for the next couple of months <laughs> until this sorts itself out. Um, but she was, at the time, she was dating a guy. And then, like, after that, she was dating another guy. So we were, and I was, like, mm. having fun and being young in Amsterdam. Because um, there was a time in my life where I was way more just, like, we fun. I'm just not at that point right now. Sure. But so we were sort of, like, doing our thing. Uh, so we were really good friends. But there was always a flirtation there, and then eventually it did. It like became, it became a thing, um, but it did not last mm. <laughs> for lots of reasons. But probably, I think most people would say the main reason was that she was straight. <laughs> well, so. was there any inkling of it when y'all were together, whether like in bed or out of bed? Was there anything where you're like, I w- I'll, I'll put it this way: I I did someone for a very long time who. Over the course of the relationship, realized she started off as like Miss Polly Pocket and then realized she's not Polly. Oh, that's so interesting. And but before oh, wow. she broke up with me and what was very angry. Um, mm. but but I was getting inklings of it, and there was these like little red flags. I'm like, oh, you know, like, and then I was starting to get concerned, like, is this a relationship that should continue? Because I don't oh. want to be harming someone by keeping her in a relationship sure. that's not right for her. So, I, and actually, so the day before we broke up, I realized, oh, I have to break up with this person because this, she's not, it's, it's, it's ev- no, oh, every other time you. we talk yeah. is a thing. And so, likewise, in maybe a less sad way, it's more like, did you ever get inklings like, oh, I wonder if she's straight or like, she's not that enthusiastic when she's down there? Like, what's. No, we like, 
Well, first of all, we were on and off for like a year. So sure. we were constantly doing a back and forth thing. A lot of, lot of drama. <laughs> this is what I used to yeah. be like really into. And this is what I'm working through. I tend to be attracted to people who will like create a tsunami of drama in my life. And I'm working through like hopefully not being attracted to that type of person because yeah. that's not super productive. Um, but no, she was always like very upfront. Like I don't think she ever... She maybe like was like, oh, maybe I'm I'm bi or whatever, like when we were dating. But it was never like, yeah, she was never like, this is it. I'm flipped for life. Sure. Like she was very clear that like it was it was about me and it was about our relationship, which also that's kind of like a fucking drug, too. You know what I mean? Like that's flattering. And like that's something what? I used to be drawn yeah. to. Yeah, that's another thing that's hard is like I used to definitely be a person who was like, into like, can I get that straight girl to make out with me? Like yeah. that had a lot of appeal because then it's about me. It's not about like. Uh. But then you are you ever sitting there waiting for the other shoe to drop to be yeah, like, the oh, whole she, time. yeah, the whole time, the whole year that we were on and off, um, and then eventually it it like fully dropped. Sure. Uh, but also like I was moving back to the states, so it was just like a whole fucking melee of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily call that a healthy relationship, but it was when it was good, it was like really, really good. Mm -hmm. And she's definitely the, the last person or the most recent person who I've really been like, Oh, that's like, if you could excise a lot of the drama and the hetero <laughs> stuff. overwhelming heterosexuality, <laughs> like that is the kind of relationship I want. Like our dynamic, I really loved. So would you want to get married one day? <sighs> I don't know. Ooh, I don't. It's weird because I'd be like, yeah, I'd want to spend like the rest of my life with someone. But then the actual thing of marriage to me is like, it just feels like it doesn't work. It, like there's a million fucking divorces. Yeah. Well, so I don't know. It just seems unnecessary. Uh, Doesn't like, what, it? Well, the paperwork yeah. part of it. It's like, yeah, yeah. like the, the wedding fun, but like the paperwork part seems yeah. dumb. And I've just seen so many divorces that mm -hmm. it just starts to but aren't you attracted like to the moi like maybe mine will maybe? work yeah um <laughs> i don't know i'll put it this way it has not come up for me and like i haven't gotten to a point where it's like oh we're thinking about sure. or like talking about marriage so i'm lucky that i haven't had to i'm not to really tackle that yet How's uh so uh, so you're not on the app so but like do you still meet some people here and there and try to go out yeah and if so kinda. does the podcast become like a factor in that oh, man I wish it would like that like when when well, we started Nicole's like you're gonna get a girlfriend I was like you don't know me well enough <laughs> like, <laughs> how'd you two get connected Nicole and I yeah we did uh we did a play reading uh there's a playwright named Susan Miller and she did a a really popular uh. Uh, see, I was going to say queer web series, but I think w it it was a lesbian web series. It's okay. a better, is a more accurate way to describe it. And Nicole was uh, Nicole was a star of it. So she and Nicole are very tight. And so Nicole was in the reading, and then she, this woman, just randomly like found me online, like saw some of my clips or something, and asked me to do it. So Nicole and I literally met just from doing this reading in like a week of rehearsal, and we just sort of clicked and like kept in touch. Um. Yeah, and they're like, hey, want to do a podcast? It was pretty much like that, honestly. I <laughs> like, mean, that is how many podcasts yeah, get started. It kind of uh, did start like that. If you don't start it because like uh, women will only sleep uh, sleep with you instead of date you, then it's <laughs> just you and a friend. We're like, want to do a podcast? Why not? Let's yeah, we didn't know each other super super well when we started yeah. it. Now we're like in each other's pockets because it's just like we communicate ten. Such a visual times a way day. to say you're tight. Oh, you know, you know in what? Each it's because my my ex who I was just talking about was British, and that was her expression, and uh, we were just talking about her. So it was in my it was in my brain. Mm -hmm. It sounds better when you say that with an accent. <laughs> um, but, but like, it, but like, is anyone ever worried? Like, oh, is this going to end up on a podcast? Or, um, in terms of like dating me? Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, because I don't think I've been on a date with anyone since we started the podcast. Oh, okay. When did we start it? In June? We started in June. Mm -hmm. Well, be be prepped for that I've because been... that is a common concern. Oh, yeah. No, I can oh, understand yeah. that. But fortunately, since it's mostly us talking to other people, I mean, I'll be honest, we do talk about our lives a lot. So I listened. Good. I'm aware. Shit. All right. <laughs> um, be worried, ladies. Um, no, it has not. It hasn't come up yet. Sure. 
It hasn't come up yet. Oh. I've dodged that bullet by not dating anyone since June. <laughs> ah, very wise of you. I'm sure yeah, it was all planned that way. Yeah, definitely a choice. Yeah. Totally by choice. Um, no, it's crazy because Nicole was like, oh, you're going to get a girl from, from this podcast. What's happened is that the podcast keeps us so fucking busy that mm-hmm. like I literally, there's there's no way I could be dating right now. So yeah. in that respect, <laughs> shooting myself in the foot. Yeah. Well, uh, well, Lauren, thanks so much for chatting with me. Thank you All for right, coming to my fun. home and dealing with my dog. Oh, your dog's been great. Uh, no, no, he's a very sweet boy. Uh, <laughs> wh- where can people? Well, one real quickly though, um, on the volunteering front, is that yes. something? Uh, are what type of pl- if people want to go volunteer? Oh, you're is so the nice. LGBT center like a nationwide thing, or is it the type of thing where you find your local? place like yeah, that. Yeah, they would find um uh their local one, but there are LGBT centers like there I won't say all over. Yeah. I wish they were all over. They're not, but in like major cities and stuff. Yeah, if you literally, you know, just Google um uh LGBT center yeah. in the name of your city, uh hopefully that'll come up. Um Hopefully. Yeah, I, I right? hope like- so. <laughs> I know we're so lucky in LA cuz it's like there's one here and there's also one in Long Beach yeah. and so it's and the one here is I think it might be I think the LA LGBT Center is the is the biggest one yeah. nationwide, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um But it seems like they could like these places could use help. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. And it's really it's so rewarding. I really love doing it. I really really like doing it. So yeah, yeah I would totally recommend that. Very nice. For people. Well, uh, people, you should go check out the coming out, coming out with Lauren Nicole. Coming out with Lauren and Nicole, yeah. And uh, all the things. where can where they can where can they find you? Uh, I am at Lauren. Not on OKQ on Twitter. Apparently. Not well. You know what? I don't know how to deactivate my <laughs> fucking profile, so you can find me there. But if I do not respond to your message, it, it's probably because I'm just not checking it. <laughs> um, at Lauren Flans on Twitter. Uh, also at coming out pod on Twitter. Cause I run the, I'm addicted to social media. So I'm the one who runs the Twitter account. So. I love running Twitter. Accounts. It's so fun. I run another Twitter account for like a website and I'm just like, Oh, it's, it's the fun. best. Yeah. And Nicole's like, thank God you like doing it. Cause I hate it. And I'm like, <laughs> cool. I am feeding an unhealthy addiction, but I love it. Uh, and then on Instagram, I'm Lauren underscore flans, but well, that's all just the, I just post podcast stuff. I don't know how to use Instagram. Don't say just podcasts. So no, you're I mean, posting podcasts. I'm posting stuff. podcasts. It's like yeah, look, all of that's, my posts. That's the fake enthusiasm we have to put I'll in. I'll put it this way. <laughs> There's a post every week, and it's about the new episode of the <laughs> podcast. But if you want to know, like, what did Lauren eat for breakfast, or did her dog poop on the rug again, that's Twitter. That's a Twitter. That you go to Twitter for. Mm, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, Lauren, why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody? Uh, okay. Thanks for listening to me. I got very shy just then. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to me say words. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) I just want to give a quick congratulations to Lee Anthony and the entire Beat family listening from Birmingham, UK. It's the United Kingdom for the Americans who were like, I don't know what state the UK is. No, I want to say congratulations on your new little baby, little little bundle of joy. Congratulations on that. Uh, I hope you all enjoy my conversation with Lauren Flans. Uh, I hope you'll go check out her show, Coming Out with Lauren and Nicole. As always, uh, you can you can say hello to me on the social medias at the Billy Presida. Uh, actually, currently. My Twitter is up and working. My Facebook page for the Man War podcast is working, but my Instagram temporarily down. Hopefully, I will have an update for everyone next week on the whole Instagram situation. But for now, you can go check me out uh, on all those other social media. And if Insta was your only way to contact me, guess what? I got an email address. Hit me up with your comments, your questions, your titties over to manwhorepod at gmail.com. Don't forget, we're running a very special offer. These limited edition hand-drawn stickers made by Rosa Escandone. Those are going to be available for all of my Patreon members as of December 19th. That's the day I'm going to ship them out. If you're not a member, uh, if you become a member on December 20th, I am sorry, but you have missed the deadline. Head on over to patreon.com slash podcast to take advantage of that special offer. Again, that's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Podcast. 
Next week, I have got on uh, one of my little former flames and, and a hookup from long, long ago. Well, maybe not that long ago. A couple years ago. Um, fellow comedian Rebecca Rush is going to be on next week with uh, with my special co-host, Caitlin Bailey. Remember her? Yeah, it's going to be a doozy of an episode. I cannot wait to share it with you all next week. So until then, go shopping buy me something from my holiday wish list, hug the ones you're with, and stay slutty. 